good afternoon, everybody. And uh, first of all, Claudia, thank you for the opportunity to present here our project and Euro Bioimaging uh, uh, for invitation to this community. Uh, when we are we are preparing this presentation, the goal was really to share our experience with our, I would say, successful um, joint uh, uh, cooperation between TESCAN and uh, Institute of Molecular Genetics. So at the beginning, uh, I would like to give you more insights about the logic, why we established such a collaboration and what are the benefits. So at the beginning, let me introduce very briefly TESCAN because I'm sure that not everybody in this uh, audience is familiar with uh, uh, with the electron microscopy. So Dominic, the next slide will introduce TESCAN very briefly. I'm not going to go into all the details because there are there are many others uh, in the history of 33 years of the company. But TESCAN was established uh, in 1991 as a small company providing at the beginning uh, just the service activities for previous uh, company Tesla. However, they kept a lot of experience and knowledge about electron microscopes, so TESCAN started to develop our own products. And there are a couple of milestones listed here, I, and I would like to highlight a couple of them. In 2011, TESCAN was the first in the world to introduce on the market the plasma FIP. It's a main direction for the effective cryo-EM sample preparation these days, and uh, TESCAN has therefore a long experience with it. We did it together with uh, the Orsay Physics, a French company, and just two years ago, we, the, our two companies decided to merge as uh, Tescan Orsay Holding. We have experience in cryo world uh, already more than 10 years when we introduced the first cryofib uh, on the market, and when uh, the time went through uh, or continued uh, two years ago, we opened the gates to the transmission electron microscopy world by introduction of the uh, system Tescan Tensor. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, ago, we proudly introduced on the market the next generation of another focused ion beams, Ember 2 and Ember X2. So, however, let me uh, uh, speak more about the project itself. So on the next slide, Dominic, uh, everything started uh, in 2021, when Tescan, uh, after, of course, long discussions with IMG, Tescan provided Ember cryofipsum uh, mm -hmm. to the labs of the uh, Institute of Molecular Genetics. And the primary aim was really to develop and mainly optimize workflows for cryo TM lamella preparation because, uh, and also continue in further development in correlative approach between light microscopy and electron microscopy for effective uh, sample or region of interest navigation. And the motivation was that uh, Institute of Molecular Genetics had a lot of uh, other stuff, and we were looking for an access to the cryo TEM to effectively develop this workflow. So, primary focus was really to create a partnership of joint research and hands on development. And this was, of course, presented uh, as a shared knowledge through workshops, publications, and uh, application insights, and uh, whatever. So, if on the next slide, Dominic, uh, I will introduce the primary requirements of this development. So, first of all, there was a need from the side of IMG uh, for the cryo TM lamella preparation expertise. They had other possibilities, as I already mentioned, how to prepare the samples. However, this novel technology, very precise, effective, focused ion beam based, uh, was missing simply. So, even they had no prior experience in advance. It was the role and opportunity for TESCAN to rapidly train Dominic and, and the staff uh, for these workflows. And therefore, we allowed or opened the, the access to our R&D laboratories or application laboratories uh, that work together very effectively. So therefore, based on that, we could optimize the workflow and tailor, tailor the workflow specifically according to the needs of the Institute of Molecular Genetics. And on the next slide, uh, the partnership that drives actually the innovation and the logics behind is that for IMG, the main benefit was that we, by this project, we uh, actually provided the rapid adoption of the cryo TEM novel methods and therefore provide the real time access to Tescan's expertise and resources. And the 
And on the other hand, for a company like, for example, Tescan is, we are getting a direct feedback from experienced people from the field, from the customers, because we are tailoring our future development based on the customer needs. So there was the opportunity and still is the opportunity to optimize these workflows and techniques in a real world environment with users. And the most important thing is that therefore it has an implication into the future development. So if we better understand a real customer needs, we are therefore able to produce and develop better products, I would say. So this was from my perspective, just a very brief introduction of the motivation of this project. And I would like to ask Dominic to uh, take his floor and uh, introduce you this project from the scientific perspective with, of course, more, more scientific results and uh, so on. So for now, thank you. And I give the floor to Dominic. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me well? Yes, sir. Uh, so, as Andre already mentioned, uh, we were a long-running electromicroscopic facility with uh, all the equipment that's necessary for cryo-electromicroscopy and even traditional room temperature electromicroscopy. We had uh, transmission electromicroscopes and a lot of equipment for sample preparation. However, what we were lacking, as already mentioned, was uh, a scanning electromicroscope and uh, equipment for uh, FIPS and lamella preparation. Then Tescan came in and provided us with uh, first the equipment, which is of course crucial, but also with the expertise to enable us to rapidly adopt this method and really get more out of our TEMs, because the traditional traditional methods of sample preparation have their limitation. Uh, what we were provided with through the expertise was, as I mentioned, rapid uh, rapid adoption of this uh, already established method of uh, cryo -fip lamella, which serves uh, as a way to get your biological sample to your TEM for analysis in a way that uh, enables you to thin down a sample that would be otherwise too thick for direct TEM measurement or direct TEM analysis, uh, while preserving the biological structures in really lifelike conditions. You freeze the sample to achieve vitrification, and then with ion beam, you locate the object of interest. If you see my mouse uh, here, let's say this is object of interest, cell that you want to analyze, and you find it in uh, ion beam imaging and just burn hole on the bottom and on the top, and then polish it very thin so it's eligible for TEM analysis. This is thin enough. This is what uh, Tescan specialist trained us to do relatively quickly, and we adopted the methods for uh, many of our routine projects. But that's not uh, enough. That wasn't the point of the collaboration, just to give us stuff for free. Uh, the goal was uh, mutual development of, of uh, workflows that weren't established yet. We had a scientific question, uh, which necessitated uh, a more complicated approach. In this case, here, for the purpose of this collaboration, it serves, serves just as a justification, but for us, it was a very important project. We have a C. elegans worm that serves as a model for human laminopathy, for muscular dystrophy, a nasty disease that's not very well studied yet, or well, it's, it is very well studied, but the mechanisms are not very well known yet. And we needed to analyze very specific cells out of many uh, inside this multicellular organisms. And this traditional method wouldn't give us uh, uh, means to analyze that, that object. And traditional room temperature methods don't preserve the conditions in, in a really lifelike state. So what we did is we started uh, working on development of cryo lift out, which was uh, just a few years before that demonstrated by uh, people in uh, Jurgen Plitzko lab, I believe. And we introduced a new Tescan, well, together we tested new Tescan cryo nano manipulator that allows us to do magic like that. Here on the left side, you see image from point of view of the ion beam, and you can see we are scanning and milling away the excess material. And here on the right side, 
we observe the process from point of view of the scanning electron microscope. This object is a worm, and you can see we cut holes from both sides, cut around, rotate the whole thing and cut under, then bring in that new cooled uh, cryo nanomanipulator, weld the manipulator to the sample, to this object of interest, cut it off, and lift it out of the worm. So now we have nice salami slice of the poor frozen worm. We weld this object, this lamella, to a receptor TEM grid, cut off the manipulator. We can polish, polish it fine and thin. And now we have uh, this, this specifically lifted out piece of worm that otherwise wouldn't be accessible in a TEM in any way. And we bring it to the TM, uh, do classical TM cryotomography, and we analyze volume of the internal intracellular structures. We can see mitochondria here, we can see individual ribosomes. However, we needed a, a bit more targeted approach to really hit the particle cell that we are interested in. For that, you can't just freeze it uh, by throwing it in liquid nitrogen. Uh, we need to use high pressure freezing uh, when you stuff the worms in this tiny planchet. Uh, in th this diameter of this is three millimeters. So you can see how small this thing is. And then we acquire fluorescent images to really navigate to find the cell that we are interested in. I can tell you it's somewhere here. And we use this image for navigation. Uh, by knowledge of where this is, uh, we find uh, image of surface, navigate to the right area in the SEM, and point is to find the area, mark it uh, in, with the ion beam, and cut a deep trench, and then cut thin slices of the area of interest to find the cells that will give us the answers we seek. We can do it even multiple times. This is, uh, we first introduced this, what we call a sequential lift out, where from one side we can really lift out many, many lamellae as long as we have material available. A process looks uh, quite simple, but it's not, not so. Uh, we can load fluorescence images or light microscopy images into software of the scanning electron microscope, overlay it over live image, and navigate to the very specific area that we are interested in with the worms below the surface. Then based on that image of the surface and marked area of interest, we can have this is image from the ions. This is reflected light image. We can overlay the two and mark where the area of interest starts. And as already shown on the scheme, we can dig a hole, do a cut of the lamella, undercut, and lift out one lamella after another to find whether there are the cells. This is already fluorescent imaging. While still frozen, this, uh, mind you, this is all under liquid nitrogen temperature. We lifted out the lamellae, uh, imaged them in fluorescence, found out if we have the cells of interest in there. Uh, then we polish the area with the cell thin and go to the TM. And the result is that we have a TM tomography of this subcellular area of one particular cell out of a huge multicellular organism. And during the whole time, uh, Tescan engineers were supporting us, uh, aiding us with uh, technical issues, uh, transferring the best practice and how to proceed with that. And on the other hand, we shared our problems. We also uh, shared suggested solutions. And quite often, I observed basically this backward flow of, of I gave them problems and they uh, suggested how to solve it, which later worked. And as a result, we were able to get uh, first proof that this workflow uh, would work for our samples, and we were able to get nice scientific data that are hopefully soon to be published. Here, I would like to thank uh, the team that took part in this whole project. Uh, from our side, it's mostly Vlada Filimoninko and Pavel Hozak, who uh, negotiated this form of collaboration, and from Tescan side, of course, Andre, who was a negotiator and driving force behind this project, and then mainly Samzake as an engineer who did immense amount of work and who spent his <laughs> overtime and a lot of 
just unbelievable amount of time supporting us and uh, trying to solve our issues with the workflow. I'd like to thank you for uh, listening to this, this talk and uh, I hope that our collaboration will continue to the future. We have a lot more work to do and I'm glad we still have support and uh, a lot more things to do together. Thank you.